Hi everyone, today I'm working on my May tag and it's inspired by this tag which is Tim Holtz's uh, May tag for 12 tags of 2013 and uh, so if you take a look at what he's done and let's see where I end up using his tag as inspiration. Now his technique this month, or one of the techniques he used this month, used rub-ons and I really don't think these rub-ons that I found in my stash are going to cut it for a Tim Holtz tag somehow. So I didn't have any of Tim's um, rub-ons so that's something to add to my shopping list and I think I'm going to try using these ones that I found in my stash um, because they're black and white. The Although I like the basic grey ones here I think they're a little bit light for what I want to do with them. I didn't have the same colour palette of distress stains that Tim used so I'm going to put these four together. So I'm using Picket Fence, Seedless Preserves, picked raspberry and peeled paint. I had a bit of trouble getting a random look that I liked with my rub-ons and I think probably the rub-ons that Tim uses are quite small and I think they lend themselves a bit better to this technique. Um, so I'm going to have another go because I didn't like those and I think the trick is to make sure you do have a little bit of white space left and that you're happy with where they're laid out on your tag. So I'm, although I don't really know where I'm going to end up with this tag design, I am going to lay them out as if I'm trying to create um, a little bit of a design with the rub-ons. The next part of the technique is to add the distress stains to your craft mat. And I know from previous experience that I can quite easily get a bit of a muddy mess and I don't really want to end up with that here so I'm going to be careful about how, how I add the ink and I find that a little bit of um, mopping up of excess and uh, drying things off as I go I end up with a result that I like. I don't think I'm truly a random person I like to be a little bit more in control of what I end up with and I think you'll see that here in uh, how I'm applying the inks to my tag. I do like all the grungy techniques that Tim teaches us, but I think I always tend to give it a little bit more of a girly twist when I actually come to do my own version. And I think you'll see that here, particularly when I'm about to colour my ribbon. My first attempt, I did get it very muddy and I wasn't happy with it, so I put a lot less ink onto my craft mat this time, really got lots of little droplets so I'm getting tiny spots of colour and I am going to leave some white on my ribbon and I think it just makes it a little bit more delicate for the look that I'm going for. Using the um, picked raspberry and the seedless preserves I'm just going to colour a couple of roses so that I can use them on my tag and look how beautifully they match. And to match some more of that black and white feel that I've got with the rub-on technique, I'm just going to use a couple of my visual artistry stamps and some black archival ink to add a little bit more pattern to my ribbon. Next I'm going to stamp with my black archival onto my tag and I'm going to use the same uh, flowery stamp I just used and this bird one. Now this could be a bit tricky for me, I'm not the world's best stamper but I'm hoping I end up with something that I like after all the hard work of that rub-on technique. I really like the way the rub-ons stand out against the inky background now because they uh, have acted as a resist against the distress stain. So I'm adding some stamps and then just taking a damp baby wipe and removing some of the ink to give a little bit more of a blurred finish to match the random nature of the rub-ons. I'm adding a little bit more ink to my tag because I just want to freshen the colours and then I just want to tone down the black a little bit so I'm going to use some picket fence and just lightly mottle it uh, using a tissue over my tag and it just knocks back that stark black. I wasn't quite happy with how that was looking and this just gives it a little bit more of a gentle feel. I think you have to trust your instincts and if your eyes telling you something's not quite right then have a little play till you get what you want. Uh, I'm going to stamp a couple of bird images because I think that I want to decoupage them onto my tag. 
and that's all my inky stuff over. Most of my tags I do like to frame, just kind of think it brings out the design. And I've decided on a black and white for this tag and I'm going to start by mounting it with a really fine white frame around the outside. So just using my tag as a template I'm just going to trim around it. So a little bit of fussy cutting, one of my bird stamped images. I wish I could do it this fast in real life. <laughs> All the time that I'm making my version of the tag, I'm always looking at what Tim's used, how he's used it, and seeing kind of little twists that I want to make to each of those elements. And I bought this little film strip ribbon a little while ago when it was used on another tag, and I've not used it yet, so I think I'm going to do it this time. Again, I'm getting out uh, my embellishments and seeing what kinds of things that Tim used and what kinds of things I'm going to be able to use on my tag. I found that quite a few of the things that Tim used this month are new items and they're just not in our shops at the minute over here in the UK so I'm going to use instead of one of the plain um, enamel elements that Tim used on his tag I'm going to use one of the enamel numbers. I'm just using some of the teeny tiny bits of my rub-ons as Tim did on his enamel element. And gradually you start to place things and it's almost like magic they find their way into a, um, a design that's pleasing to you so I'm going to attach my I want to create a little bit of movement in my film strip ribbon so I'm just going to um, push it into little waves and attach it to my tag with a stapler and then I think I'm ready to attach it to my black frame Things are really starting to take shape now. I find that there are certain points when I'm making my tags that there are elements that I need to commit. So for the design to go any further, um, I'm going to commit some of the main elements to the tag. So I'm gluing on my little number and roses because I kind of already figured out from the beginning where I wanted those to go. And then I'm going to look at my birds and where I'm going to place them. First there was one bird. And then there was two. <laughs> if you're wondering why this isn't a proper tutorial, it's more of a how I got from A to B. It's because it takes me this long to work out what my tag's going to be. I started out with that one piece of inspiration from Tim and uh, I'm having fun getting to where it's going to take me. So really I, I wanted this video to be more about the fun that I'm having and I hope that it inspires you if you haven't already tried to play along with Tim, to pop over to his blog, see um, what he does each month and then be inspired to play along. I mean, Tim inspired me and I hope that my video inspires you to go and check out and play along with Tim's 12 tags of 2013. I wanted to use a quote about May on my tag, so I had a quick look on the internet and I came up with this one by Edwin Way Teal. Uh, the world's favourite season is the spring. All things seem possible in May. And I'm just going to use that last little part. All things seem possible in May. I've also had another little raid of my stash. And I'm using some Prima Genie Stones in pink and green to match my tag. And a couple of the pearls from the Ideology range of charms. I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head. But they do come from uh, the Ideology range. And I'm going to group them together on some green thread and use them as charms on my tag and I'm going to get my birds to carry my charms. And although this video doesn't show it, I spent a very long time putting my quote onto the Distress Ink colours that I'd used on my tag thinking it would be a nice idea and then I didn't like it at all. I felt that it covered up way too much of that inky background and the rub-on technique that I'd taken such time with at the beginning of the tag and I didn't like the fact that it was covering it all up so I scrapped that and I made a little dot with the quote on instead which I glossy accented and I also glossy accented my birds and I think that that just gives them a bit of robustness because I do want them to stand out uh, from my tag so just looking at the final positioning of bits and pieces on my tag and then I'm ready to take my uh, silicone glue and make sure that those final elements 
stay in place. So tucking one charm under my film strip ribbon and one bird flying off one side of my tag carrying a little quote about May and that final bird carrying that other set of charms at the top. As I finish editing this movie I've just realised it comes out about 12 minutes and I thought you might be interested to know that it has taken me about four hours to put this tag together so as you can see I had lots of inky fun. Hope you like it, I'm quite pleased with the way it's turned out and uh, I'm looking forward already to June's tag to see what lessons I can learn. I really liked this rub on technique from this month and uh, I think I'll use that again. It definitely means I'm going to have a little bit of a shopping trip when they finally land on English soil and get some of those rub-ons, the new rub-ons from Tim Holtz. I think I forgot to mention that. Our Tim is a bit of an enabler and he shows us all these lovely goodies to tempt us with each month and there's always something you really, really want to buy. So this month on my list are those little rub-ons that Tim used in the 12 tags of 2013 May tag. I hope you liked what I made this month and thank you for watching.